Hello viewers of Sounding Board, and tonight we're going to talk about the Commando figure, the John Matrix figure. Why do I have a John Matrix figure? It's because I was lucky to get a hold of one this week. He's missing his submachine gun, his mini comic, and I got a hold of him loose, not in package. Excuse me. I wish I did get him in package because it would have been quite cool to show you what the old Commando packs look like because they had really cool art on it, comic book art. One of the things fascinating about Commando is the fact this was a character, a movie wrote by Joseph Lopes, one of the vets of the comic book industry. And technically, he predate, predates Dutch. And you notice they're very similar in their look and their design. Because this, this was filmed right after Conan the Barbarian. Where Arnie's trying to find roles that make him a hero. And he had all this cool stuff. He had a removable knife, a hand machine gun, which I was lost, uh, shoulder, uh, sh uh, a pistol with a uh, sidearm uh, harness. And all this stuff could be removed. I think he even had, no, the little version had the rocket launcher. So you could literally strip Arnie down to actually his John Matrix swimming underwear that's at the end of the film. So the figure is very versatile. And he's ripped like Schwarzenegger at this age of his thing. And he has all his commando stripes and everything when he made the assault on the island. I don't think Joseph Lopes ever thought this movie would be what it is today and, and be fondly remembered by fans. It's one of Schwarzenegger's really entertaining films that it's so dumb that you can go back and watch it over and over. And he has some of his great memorable lines, too. What happened to Scully? I let him go. And, uh, and stuff like that. You know. It just, and it, it's uh, funny is, it's back when L Melissa Milano was actually a likable person as well. Not just as likable uh, person she is today. You know, that's the funny part about actors and actresses as certain things when they were nobodies they were a lot of them were likable people and then as Hollywood progressed and they progressed in in the cinema and in entertainment they change and like Arnold with the governor you know he went from Hercules goes bananas all the way to Becoming the governor. I'll be back. But, yeah, this is like one of the coolest finds I've ever had. Is to get the Dutch figure. And, you know, when, when he has even the removable clothes, so then he can do his whole, like, swimming thing. But the only sad part is he only has arms, head, waist hips and that's it for movement which at this time was pretty much the uh, standard of of uh, points of articulation but he, they're following the formula that He-Man had set up you know where they kind of stand there and they're you know this one's about six feet six inches tall He-Man's about five and uh, I think Rambo was about this size. He was six, so they could interact with the Rambo figures from Coleco at that time. But these were done by a smaller company, so they didn't have a big, massive release. I think they were released basically through KBs and Toys R Us. 
they weren't in stores like uh, KB, like uh, Target and uh, Mervyn's, because Mervyn's existed at that time. Uh, Montgomery Wards. You know, you found stuff like that, really collected stuff like this, usually at Toys R Us, KB's, which are two stores you really miss nowadays because you used to find all this cool stuff like this. And so, you know, you would get the commando figure, dress him back up, and then send him out on missions. You know, the missions you could come up with. You know, maybe you want him to go take an assault on Castle Grayskull because you own the playset. Or Bright Moon, if your sister owned it. And just to, just to piss her off, you decided to have your commando figure go and attack Bright Moon. Because that's a sissy toy. Or, um, what other place that they have for, for decent sized figures of this scale? Snake Mountain. Then Rambo had his, uh, Viet Cong S style playsets under the guise of Warhawk, the terrorist organization, instead. But, you know, it's like even the way he's posed, you almost get the feeling he, they had plans to come up with a rocket launcher for him. Like I said, he had a machine gun. You know. And at this time, who didn't want an action figure of Arnold Schwarzenegger? Because then it, it, there's a long dry spell between this figure and the first Terminator figure, or last action hero, that actually carries a somewhat look of Schwarzenegger. You know, this is the early rep earliest representation, I should say, of Arnold Schwarzenegger in action figure form. Because even in the Predator line by Kenner, you never had Dutch in it. Even though you think you would have, they didn't make him. And the Predators only stood about this tall, so you could never have used Commando as Dutch, even, to fight Predators. But you could have him fight the Alien Queen, though. Because the Alien Queen stood about this tall. But, yeah. This is the fun part of the, of, the, of the 80s and 90s toys. They all had their own character likeness and experimentation to them. A lot of small companies came and went at that time period too. And then a lot of companies during this time found establishment for anywhere from 5 to 10 years. And as the toy industry changed, uh, they couldn't change with it. Because they were writing one toy as their star quarterback. They could never find that second one to replace the one that was slowly dying. You know, it's kind of like Hasbro. If it wasn't for G.I. Joe, I don't think Hasbro really has the star power that they did. They had to buy Kenner, buy Galoob, and buy up all their license and other characters that are memorable and likable just to add it to their line of figures. Um, Mattel right now holds the license of the WWF, which used to be Hasbro's, which you think, which is funny. Um, and it was before that Remco's and Jack Specific, which is basically Remco toys. It was the creators of Remco that reopened a new company. But yeah, this is one of the coolest little finds I've ever had. So, until next time, this is the Sounding Board, signing off.